So what really was the problem with WikiLeaks? The problem with WikiLeaks was that they pointed out the contradiction. They pointed out that while the US was posturing around the world as a defender of human rights, it was turning a blind eye to human rights atrocities in Tunisia and whispering about it in their embassies. And they have always done that. And they all, it also revealed that US forces were committing war crimes just as appalling as the war crimes that are being committed in Ukraine right now. So, you know, WikiLeaks absolutely highlighted that contradiction and that's why WikiLeaks was so dangerous and had to be shut down. Uh, now look, the weight of opinion is now with us. The weight of worldwide opinion. You can go onto the web and you can read today, you know, Amnesty International, Penn, both of which support political prisoners, all the you know, free speech organisations in the United States, um, even they support uh, WikiLeaks, European organisations, Australian organisations, my own union, MEAA, and the International Federation of Journalists, of course, support WikiLeaks. We've also had the major media organisations come out far too late, far too late, but they've come out and actually because they realised that if Julian Assange is extradited and faces trial, they too are under the gun. Now what's really missing in Australia and why there's not more people here today is that we do not have the Australian media on our side. And we really have to ask why. You know, I believe that most Australians want to see Julian Assange free. That's certainly what we're told from polling. Uh, but the Australian media will not campaign for Assange. They campaign for all sorts of other things, uh, but they won't campaign for Assange. Now why is this? It's partly because News Corp still dominates our media, not just in the fact that it's a loud voice, not necessarily fully powerful, but it's a loud voice, and it also influences and moves Australian media to the right. It's that most journalists are captured by the foreign policy establishment, which gets a huge voice. People who are, you can be very sceptical about what they're saying, so-called neutral experts, who in fact are fed by our intelligence services or in the hands of the United States military and intelligence services. Now, there are exceptions uh, to this um, betrayal by the Australian media. And of course, the exceptions prove the rule. Uh, one of them is Anthony Lowenstein, who I was speaking with at rallies back in 2010. I just saw Anthony here today. Uh, John Pilger, of course, Brian Tui. Um, you know, there are other journalists, but, but unfortunately, we are the exceptions. Now, history will record the shameful role of the Australian media and the shameful role of the Australian government. But that's not enough, of course, to feel you're on the right side of history. Something has to happen now. For Julian Assange, something has to happen right now, as soon as possible. Now, one of the things that's been very powerful, and the media again has amplified this, is the campaign, and Nils Meltzer deals with this, character assassination is a tool of torture. It can be used to alienate people from people in ways that are very dangerous. And what I find when I'm uh, you know, and I talk to people at WikiLeaks or I'm listening to the media. I've even seen senior journalists on panels say, well, of course, I don't like Julian Assange, but I think this. That is so corrosive. Every time someone says that, it undermines the campaign. It neutralises the message. So I suggest that of course it doesn't matter whether we like him or not, yes, that argument, but it's one of those arguments that's quite dangerous. And I suggest that people really need to take people on on that and say to them, do you actually know him? Do you know him? Where did you hear that from? Because that is continually circulating. So that is another reason why I think the, me the media use that. They know better than that, actually, but they use that as a tactic. Now, WikiLeaks is all about communication. It sent a very powerful message around the world. But there's all sorts of ways that communication works. And I suggest that a much, much, that a very big international crime happening right now in communication is revealed in actually the New York Times today. 
in a major investigation into the use of Israeli firms of developed spyware, uh, firms that are linked to the regime, spyware that is being used by US agencies, other governments, and big organizations, corporate, neoliberal organizations as well around the world to suck data out of mobile phones. That is like so dangerous, so needs to be approved. And as the journalists on the New York Times say, there is evidence that it's not been used against terrorists or it's not been used against criminals. It's been used about against people who are in political opposition. So just like the US Embassy in their little messages between themselves back in the 19, before the 2010 and no doubt today, are whispering messages um, covering up crimes, so crimes are still being committed today. And as uh, I haven't got the humour of David McBride, but I absolutely endorse the jokes that he made about Dreyfus and Wong. Um, now, I'm actually a little bit optimistic, but listening to David, I wonder if I've been a bit Pollyanna-ish. Um, but we do know that some sort of whispering messaging is happening behind the scenes right now, but we don't know what it is. But we can assume, and the fact that it's out publicly means that I think something is happening. But the whole idea that we should keep quiet so that they can go on and whisper their messages is exactly the wrong idea. We need to build and raise our voices publicly. And at this point, I would really like to thank and support people like Karen and other people who are coming here every fortnight to protest, to keep that message alive. But we also need to do more. They don't need to do more. We have to do more. And um, so I think it's very important to raise our voices. It will happen when they want it to happen. Biden will agree we are in the hands, one of the other crimes of the media is to allow over the years our government, our society to be absorbed further into the umbrella of US neo-imperialism than even previously. The whole idea, I mean everyone's been celebrating Whitlam and Whitlam wasn't perfect. But one thing Whitlam would have never endorsed was here because he was actually worrying about the US bases that were here, and that was partly connected to the dismissal. But one thing Whitlam would um, absolutely turn in his grave um, at is the idea, the whole idea now that somehow our forces are on the major US vessels, nuclear powered vessels, is just beyond um, a appalling situation that we now find ourselves in. Um, so it will happen at the moment when Biden and Albo think there is the best political mileage to be made. And if there is not that moment, it will go on and unless one of these appeals happens to work year after year and eventually Julian Assange will be uh, it's external. But we really have to hope that doesn't happen because it's likely that he will not live to see that day. So that would be um, a tra an absolute tragedy for everybody, in, him most of all, but his family and everybody. So um, it's a cynical political exercise at this point. That's all it is. Uh, it's all about political mileage, but nevertheless, we have to hope that the right decision is made sooner rather than later. And one day in the media, we get a message like we got about the man who returned from Myanmar and we get about other people coming out of Iranian jails, we have to hope that one day we get up and we hear that Julian Assange has been released from Belmarsh Prison. Thank you very much.